Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron, this is a critique and a criticism I get a lot. So I want to explain to you why I do this and, you know, kind of the title I've got written down. We change these titles, but is it okay to compare the KJV to other translations? Now, you would not believe, many of you maybe that you read the comments here, you would believe the amount of vociferous, vehement comments saying that is totally wrong. All you can do is compare the original with the original. So you have to go back to Greek and Aramaic and Hebrew and you so do, comparing the KJV with other translations is a pointless exercise. Now that's obviously totally not true and it shocks me. There must be getting them from somewhere. I don't know if it's like James White or somebody else but you know anyhow they're getting it from somewhere and I, I'm like where did you get this from? Because now let's look at this when you're reading your Bible, almost everybody listening to me today, you're reading your Bible in Spanish or English or some cognate of that. You're not reading the Greek. And there is no original Greek. Stop that. That's stupid. I don't even know why. I mean, I sometimes say it. And I'm stupid when I say it. I don't even know. There's not the original Greek. Nobody has any originals anywhere to anybody's knowledge, okay? They don't exist except in heaven God has the originals, okay? And you cannot prove that the 27 books of the New Testament were written in Greek originally. I've done videos on that. The overwhelming evidence is some of them were some were not. Some were written in multiple languages. Some were immediately copied in other languages and it was still called scripture. Got videos on that. Don't have time to rehash that all today. And real, your top tier textual critics know what I just said is true. Uh, almost all of your other tier textual critics totally miss it. And then us good old common people down here like me, at the bottom of the pyramid, we don't get the information. It never filters down to us. Okay, so there's no such thing as the original Hebrew, the original, the original Hebrew is the one that I laugh about the most because <laughs> in all probability, most of the Old Testament was written in Paleo-Hebrew which almost nobody reads. You got Brenner, maybe a few guys that are trying to do it. I've done some reviews on their books and I'm very grateful for it. So that's just spurious. And there's no original manuscripts. We don't have the 10 commandments that came down from God. We, we just don't, but we do because God preserved them, but it's in copies, okay? And so it's uh, people fight over pointed, unpointed. So that's the first thing you just need to go. There's no such thing as the original Greek. That's just something smoke and mirrors so you can make common people feel good or make yourself feel intellectually superior, some combination of all the above. But it doesn't exist, okay? So don't have that. Then secondly, we have, um, no two ancient Greek manuscripts are anywhere close to alike. The two that are used most uh, often in textual criticism, the Vaticanus and Sinaiticus, I mean, Bergan showed in the 1880s that there were several thousands of substantial differences between them just in the Gospels alone. And so, that's not good. So that is a field of study and it is okay to have that field of study of what you feel is the reconstruction of the original text of the Bible. And I'm not against that at all. Dive into it. I feel like I'm sure scripturally that God preserved his word and that that's all a done deal. But if you want to dive into that, you feel free. I've dove into it for several years in my life. I've taught college classes on it. it. Just go for it, okay? But when we compare the King James, getting to the purpose of this video, the King James with other translations, what we are saying is we are comparing underlying text types with each other secondarily. 
even within those text types, how were certain words translated even when the text types agree or were the words translated properly? And that is the two things we're examining when we examine the King James Version of the Bible uh, with other translations of the Bible. Is what text type are they using? Is it some type of eclectic text type? Is the ESV using a different text type than the NIV 2011, which used a different text type than the NIV 2000 and, excuse me, 1984? 1984. Ooh. But, uh, and then the uh, NIRV, does the NRSV, what text type are they using? What is the MEV? What is it using Byzantine text? Is it using the Textus Receptus? Which edition of the Textus Receptus? Jubilee Bible. And so you're seeing, first of all, what text type did they use? And then you can go to the strata below that and see, do you feel based on all of the available evidence, is that true? And then secondarily, was it translated accurately? So it is totally okay to, trans to compare one English version with another English version. Here's where it came and where whoever started this meme and so you may never even heard the person, but it's spread like a viral contagion. A lie can go around the world before truth can get its truth on. Is you've got the King James Version, Luther Version, old versions, comparing them with new versions, and they're missing all these thousands of words and hundreds of verses and partial verses. 64,000 words shorter in the case of the NIV to the King James. I've had people say, that's just not true. I'd say, okay, get your, by Bruce Metzger, your NIV uh, Strong's Concordance, and it tells you the exact number of words in the NIV is 726,000 some odd words, and then the exact number in the KJV done by Larry Vance, who's the best, is 789,000 plus words. It just is. And it has nothing to do with the italics. There's not nearly that many italicized words in the King James. Secondly, the NIV is supposed to be dynamic equivalence. It's supposed to be bigger and it's smaller, much smaller. Tens of thousands of words smaller. And so as a firewall to say, I still want to believe these new translations because they're easier to read, modern textual scholarship, I will make up this red herring, this false accusation, and say you can't compare Bible versions to Bible versions. That's where it came from. It is a deceptive tactic. Almost all of us are reading Spanish or English or Chinese or some language of the Bible. And so it's totally because that's what we're hearing preached every, it's what we're reading, it's what we're teaching our children, it's what we're using in our youth groups. We're not using the fake so-called originals that don't exist, except in heaven. We're just not. So that's a disingenuous argument that's either deliberately deceptive, which is probably how it began, or ignorantly accepted, which is probably what most people are using it as now. I love you. Stick to the King James. It's the Word of God. In English, Span well, there's all kind of Spanish King James now. There's Chinese King James now. So God bless you. I love you in Jesus' name.